Welcome to AP Statistics. In this video, we're going to talk about cumulative relative frequency graphs. Long name, some people call them ogives, but they're a really nice, pretty cool graph that actually can learn a ton of information from. So this is the final type of graph for quantitative data that we're going to explore. So what is a cumulative relative frequency graph? Well, basically, it's a graph of percentiles. Here, we plot a point that corresponds to the percentile for that value. This shows how the data builds up. Let me explain through an example. I think this will make a lot more sense than me trying to bore you trying to explain one generically. So a random sample of 750 people were selected as they were leaving a grocery store in a suburban town. They were asked how much money they just spent on groceries. The cumulative relative frequency graph shows on the x-axis the actual variable, which is the dollar amounts that people spent. On the y-axis, we see the corresponding percentile for each of those values. Here it is. Now, every one of these dots represents the percentile for the value beneath it. So, for example, we could say, all right, let's look at um, this dot right here. This dot right here has an x value of 30 has a y value of roughly, I don't know, let's say 0.18. So the x value is the amount of money that, they, that somebody might have spent at the grocery store. The y value is its percentile. So this means that 18% of people spent $30 or less. Remember, a percentile is the percent of data at or below your value. Well, this value is 30. $30 spent at the grocery store. 18% of people spent that much or less, which would tell us automatically that 82% of people spent more. So every single dot represents a percentile. Now, even, you know, you don't even have to be a dot, right? So for example, we could say, all right, what about um, $65? This right here would be $65. This is, six, sorry, there's no tick mark there, but that'd be 60. This is 70. So if I draw a line up, try to be as nice as I can here, here's 65. Now there's no dot there, but you know, I can make a dot there. So it looks like $65 is the 50th percentile. Now that's actually the median. That's a pretty cool number to find. So the median is the 60 is $65. 50% of people spent less than $65 or equal to 50% spent more. So if we start with the cumulative relative frequency, the percentile that we want, we can then determine what value represents percentile. Now, the other famous percentiles, for example, would be Q1. Q1 is the 25th percentile, 0.25. So we could come over. Now, of course, we're doing a little bit of estimating here. I don't know if that's the straightest line I've ever drawn, but we can come down. Listen, it's roughly around $40. Don't hate at me because I can't draw lines, but you get the idea. What about the third quartile? That is known as the 75th percentile. So we're trying to come over here as fast as I can, as straight as I can. And then we got to come straight down. I'm trying my best. I'm not perfect. I know I'm getting a little bit off. Somewhere around $80 would be the third quartile. So I could actually find the IQR. The IQR is 80 minus 40, Q3 minus Q1, so that would also be $40. Simple, right? I mean, this is so easy, so cool. Um, other things we see here, a couple things that I want to notice is notice that, for example, the line that goes from 40 to $50 is pretty steep compared to, say, the line that goes from 100 to 110. Not as steep. Well, what does that mean? Well, more steep, bigger slope means more data, right? Because we know that $40 is about the 25th percentile. $50 would be maybe, I don't know, let's just estimate the 35th percentile. So that means that 10% of data is in between there. Once again, just estimate the percentiles, right? $40 is around 25th percentile. $50 is around the 35th percentile, give or take. So that means there's a 10% change in between. So 10% of all of the people at the grocery store spent somewhere between $40 and $50. Whereas a line that's less steep is going to have less data. So for example, $100 is at about the 95th percentile. 
$110 is maybe the 96th percentile. So that's only a 1% change. So that means only 1% of people spent between $100 and $110 because there was very, very little change in between there. Simple. Now, you could have a line that's flat, a flat line like we see right here, for example, from 110 to 120, there was no change. 96% at 110, 96% at 120, that would be a 0% change. That means that 0% of people spent between 110 and $120. You're never gonna have a line that goes down because you can't have a negative percent of people or a negative percent of data, it's impossible. So remember, a cumulative relative distribution is always building up. It's always building up. Now, I do want to comment that the uh, one of the names for these, a uh, 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 nickname is an ogive, O-G-I-V-E. Now, the reason why it's called that is because a lot of times, not always, that's why I hate rules like this because they're not always true, but a lot of times ogives kind of form like this nice S-curve. Not always, but sometimes. And I guess in old Roman architecture or Greek architecture, I don't know, that was something to do with an ogive? Was was that somehow ogliglyph? I don't know. That's kind of where it came from, the name of that, that type of curve. But anyway, it doesn't matter because not all data looks like that anyway. But pretty cool graphs, really, really, really simple to do. So um, what can be found when we look at these, right? The median Q1 and Q3 and any other percentile. I mean, I demonstrated you can find anything you want in terms of percentiles. Because we can look at the steepness of the lines, we can determine where larger or smaller proportions of data fall. We can also find the IQR because we know Q1 and Q3, we can subtract them. We can actually get a sense of the shape as well. So if we go back to this, here's what I, here's how I could figure out shape. In the beginning, we see, you know, small change, maybe, you know, small set of data here, not a very big, I don't know, maybe 3% of data there. Then we start to see some bigger changes. So we see some bigger chunks. So this tells me that over here, are some pretty big chunks of data. Oh, real big chunk right here, right? Big chunk of data. And then over here, we start to see some less and less and less chunks of data. So if I were to make a histogram, we'd see kind of a small bin in the beginning, then we'd see some, some medium bins, and maybe a big bin right here, somewhere between 70 and, and 80 to 90 is a pretty big area. But then as we get to the higher values, we definitely see smaller and smaller amounts. So that could tell me that I'm maybe a little bit skewed right, also a little bit symmetric, but you, you kind of get the feel for the shape there. We'll talk more about that when we look at another one here. It's a little bit harder to see shape with, with a cumulative relative frequency graph, but it can be done. All right, now let's look at a, um, this specific graph again, but let's, let's ask some, some, some questions. I already answered some of these questions, but I just kind of want to make sure everybody truly understands this, right? So for example, what does the dot at 30 comma 0.16 indicate? Actually, I think earlier, a moment ago, I probably should have, um, should have changed that a little bit. But I think a moment ago, I mentioned that I thought that at 30, that dot was maybe at 0.18, but whatever, maybe it is 0.16, right? Okay, so if I ask you, what does this specific dot mean? Mean Remember, the X is the amount of money and the Y coordinate is the percentile. So 16% of people spent $30 or less. All right, what proportion are between 70 and 80? So this is where I'm gonna find the dot for 70. I'm gonna find the dot for 80. And I, first off, I noticed a really big jump there. Well, let's see here. The dot for 70 is a little bit below 60, so maybe 58 percentile, somewhere around there, a little bit below 60%. And the dot for 80 is a little bit above the 80th percentile, so I don't know, maybe the 81st percentile. So the difference there from 0.81 minus 0.58, the difference there is about 23%. And again, I actually see that in this hugely steep, big slope line in between them. So 23% of data, that's, that's almost a quarter of the data, falls simply between $70 and $80. So a lot of people spent between $70 and $80 at this particular grocery store. Pretty cool. Uh, we already talked about what the flat line means. A flat line indicates that 0% of people spent in that range of money. Uh, number four, what percent of people surveyed spent over $80? Now, this is where we got to remember a percentile is the percent under, but it doesn't mean we can't figure out the over. 
So we already said that $80 was roughly at the 81st percentile. That means 81% of people spent $80 or less. So 19% spent more. That's easy to find. Just got to do a little bit of math. Now, here's a great question that a lot of kids will get wrong if you're not paying attention. How many people were spending over $80? We just said 19% were spending over, but now we want to know how many people. Well, if you go back to my directions, I said that this survey had 750 people. So if I take that 750 people and multiply it by the 19% that I know spent over $80, I could figure out how many people. So that is roughly 142.5. Obviously, this is a number of people. So maybe we round that to roughly 143 people were in that area over $80. All right, pretty cool. So those are some great types of questions I've seen on previous AP exams that result or are related to these types of graphs. Let's just look at one more graph here. So each month, car dealerships sell many cars worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, typo there. Probably wouldn't be a video for me if there wasn't some typo in there. All right, so a survey examined several car dealerships from around the country, and they asked each the average monthly sales volume. So the average amount of money that they sell in cars per month. You know, sell a bunch of cars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So notice our x-axis is in hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this two is not two, it's not 2,000, it's $200,000. This would be $900,000. 10 would be 10 hundred thousand. That'd be a million, a million dollars. This would be 11 would be 1.1 million, 1.2 million. Okay. So great question is, hey, what's that dot right there that I circled? What's that dot represent? Well, that means that a monthly sales volume of $300,000 is at the 40th percentile. 40% of car dealerships sell less than or equal to $300,000 in inventory, in cars. Okay, from around the country, 40% of dealerships sell $300,000 or less. Obviously, that means 60% sell more. Pretty easy there. Another great question is, hey, what's this flat line between one and $1.1 million? It means not a single car dealership in my survey. Not one, not a single car dealership sold between $1 million and $1.1 million in volume for that month. Steeper lines, like for example, between four and five, we pre see a pretty steep line there. That means that more data fell there. So four looks to be at about the 45th percentile. Five is at about the 60th, 60th percentile. So we've got about 15% of dealerships from around the country sell between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars lots of great questions oh by the way what's the median all you got to do is locate the 50th percentile move it over come straight down and then you got to do a little bit of estimating maybe four hundred and thirty thousand dollars would be the median somewhere a little bit more than that four not quite halfway in my opinion so about four hundred thirty thousand dollars would be a pretty good estimate of the median not too bad now, what about the shape? Well, again, I see a lot of steep lines over here. These are all pretty steep lines indicating lots of data. But on the right side, it's not so steep, not so steep. So this potentially could be a little bit skewed to the right. So at the lower values, we see more data. And then as we get into the millions and the 800 plus, we see less and less data. Terrible drawing, I realize. But it could be a little bit skewed to the right there. So can't get a, I mean, it's not the greatest picture of shape in the world, but you know, you can learn a little bit about the shape when you start thinking about the steepest of those lines. All right, this was the last type of quantitative data graph. And in my opinion, it's kind of one of my favorites. It shows percentiles. Keep that in mind. All right, nice and easy. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something today.